Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying yourself already here in the Saunters House Coaching Self-Worth Masterclass. We are now in the solution number two, which I am super excited. And I hope you guys remember what the last solution was. Listen, know that you are um, you different and unique on purpose. All right. So celebrate your difference. Celebrate your uniqueness. Don't be ashamed of that. But the, the next thing that we're going to discover in our solution in this whole uh, self-worth thing is in, in one of the areas that's going to really, really, really tremendously help you guys is that you got to get to the place where you remove yourself from toxic friends. Now, I share with you in the introduction about myself when I was growing up and about the friend that influenced my life. Many of you, if you can, half of your situation of self-worth is going to be fixed when you remove yourself from toxic friends. Now, what is toxic friends? Friends that will cause you to feel bad about yourself. They would look down on you so they can look good. That is one example. Another toxic friend is friends who is trying to influence you to damage your future. All right. Because a lot of the people that's in your life who is telling you, hey, girl, let's go to this party. Hey, yo, let's go do this. They don't understand. They don't see what's down the line. They're just operating strictly on their emotions right now. But guess what? If all the friends that I used to hang with, all the friends that I used to hang with, all the ones that that I was getting all my validation from when I was in high school and my self-worth from, they either dead, in jail, shot, you know, I mean, just, and I say that, and, I, and trust me, I have some amazing friends who are doing very well, but guess what? They were they were not the toxic friends. I have friends that I went to high school with that I'm looking at. They, they lawyers, um, they, they, they own real estate. All and these were people who were not toxic friends. The toxic friends I'm talking about is people who say things like, Oh, just sleep around. Just do, Hey, get it. Sleep with as many girls as you can right now, man. Just good. And guess what? They ain't telling you about the STDs that you're going to get. They ain't telling you uh, but, uh, that you're going to have, uh, 10 babies before you graduate from high school. They're not telling you that part. They're just telling you, Hey, just do it. Listen, these are toxic friends, guys. You got to get to the place where you surround yourself with friends who is going to support your future. Now, why is that? A, why am I bringing this into the solutions is because your friendships is affecting you. My friend, I did not realize that he affected me. I, I had no idea that the way I was living between the ages of 12 and the ages of 17 was a direct result of his influence. I had no idea. Now, I, and now many of you are saying, no, nobody controlling me. Listen, you are being controlled. You are being influenced, whether you believe it or not. You are either leading them or they're leading you. Somebody is leading somebody. And if you're going to school, if you see that your grades are dropping, if you see that you're finding yourself becoming more insecure when you are around your friends and you, you every time um, things happen, you, you just feel like you just every time you get away, you just feel like, oh, man, you feel irritated or you feel like you always got to keep comparing, competing with this person. They're toxic. You don't have to compete with anybody, like I said in the last in the last chapter. So I'm here to let you know that your friends is everything. You gotta say to my to yourself, listen, where is this friend taking me? Would you get in the car with anybody? When you get in the car, when you get on the bus, that bus is taking you somewhere. You yes, you can you have your own thoughts and you you're your own person, but that bus driver is taking you somewhere and your friends is taking you somewhere. I did not realize that my friends was taking me to a birthday party at the age of 17 where I almost got killed and shot. I didn't know that part. My friends took me to where I had um, STDs when I was uh, 15 years old. I had caught an STD. Thank God I got cured from it. But And I don't have a problem telling you that because I was reckless because of the friends I was with. You know, it was, it's, it's God protected me from, from all of the babies I should have had when I was 14, 15 years old. So what I'm saying is that, listen, your friends and most of my friends before we even got out of high school, many of them were dads and, 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 you know, and many of the, the young ladies I used to uh, roll with, they, I mean, they've had many kids before they even graduated out of high school. That is not something you want to take on to in, in, before you leave high school. But listen, I'm just telling you right now. Don't get caught up with, oh, that, oh, all these Instagram pictures and, 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 and pictures on TikTok of people showing you stuff and making you believe that this is success. I am telling you, they are not showing you the real story. So when 
The only way I was able to realize that my friend wasn't happy is when I went to his house. And the reason why is because he would never show me that part because he was showing me, he, he, he showed me the, 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 the other side, the part that he wanted us to see, but he did not show us the, that when he went, went into his house after he laughed at everybody, talked about everybody that, man, I really don't like my life. I really don't like the way I live. I don't like living in a house where, um, you know, where things are like this. He didn't want nobody to see that. So I realized that when I looked at my life going through high school, everything around my life reflected the friends that I was in. If I had friends who liked to fight, it seemed like that came on me. Friends who liked it to party, that came on me. I just began become a very influenced. Now you may say, well, no, I'm the one that influenced people. Like I said, either you're driving a bus or your friends are driving you. And I'm telling you right now, one of the solutions to getting your self-worth back is to get to the place where you start to reevaluate all your friends, write all your friends' name down and say, is this person toxic? Where is this person taking me? Are they helping me to get better grades? Are they helping me to want to start my own business before I graduate? Are they helping me to learn how to save money? Or are they, or, or, or I'm around friends that's talking about, yo, did you get those $500 pairs of sneakers? Y'all, th- I used to do that. I used to buy $300 pairs of sneakers and had no car, had nothing in the bank. Now I'm older. I wish I could have went back. And took all those sneakers that I spent all the money trying to impress people. I wish I would have went all the way back and took all that money and started investing it. <laughs> but this is this is toxic friends don't tell you that. But you know what toxic friends will tell you? Hey man, let's sell some drugs. Hey man, you can make a thousand dollars a day selling drugs, but they won't tell you that you're gonna do life in prison. These are toxic friends. So you think it's cool, but listen, the, okay, let me tell y'all real quick. That's why I have to talk about this toxic friend. My, me and my friend, uh, I was about to say his name. I'm not going to say his name. Uh, me and my friend, I remember when I began to start um, hanging with him. Before um, before hanging with him, I wasn't the type to go to a store and steal anything. you know. And I remember one day, one day he, uh, me and he was like, yo, man, let's go to the store and we go just grab us some stuff. I didn't know how to steal. And I follow this. I follow this fool. I don't know what I'm thinking about. I follow this fool into the store and I go into the store. This this guy go and just take all this stuff, put it in his jacket. He's so smooth at it. But here are my crazy, uh, silly self who ain't steal nothing from no store. I'm walking around and I just start taking stuff, try to duplicate what he did. And he was so smooth with his that he went outside, didn't get caught. And here I am still slow because I'm learning, you know, toxic friends will teach you. I'm learning. And then I take this stuff and I'm like, okay, all right, this is good. And then I try to exit. And guess what happened? The manager comes and says, excuse me, sir, um, we need to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, for what? He said, please follow me. And I remember we went into the off, uh, to the door. He showed me all the surveillance cameras of, and then he showed me me putting the stuff in. And I said, well, how do my, in my mind, I'm saying, how did my friend get out this? Oh, because the toxic friends don't show you that there's a certain way you got to do stuff so you don't be caught on the surveillance cameras. But I didn't know that. He, he ain't tell me. He went out scot-free. And guess what? I am in this store speaking to the manager about the cry because I was only in eighth grade at the time. And, and, and I remember the manager said, I'm going to call your mom and your dad. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm about to get a whooping. They go tear my butt up. And I was so scared. But what I'm trying to show you is that a toxic friend and watch this. I'm going to show you how this this friendship was toxic. When they gave me when they allowed to pick my parents and them to pick me up and blah, blah, blah. The next day. He didn't come up to me and say, man, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have put you in that situation. You know what he did? He laughed, joked about it, and told everybody how stupid I was for getting caught and began to make fun of me. Do you think now, is that a good friend? And many of you got friends right now and you think this is oh, this is my girl. This is my but No, they ain't your friend if they're going to let you get yourself arrested, caught, do something that's going to cost your life. Now, that was a small scenario, but that same friend started to move to, to selling weed. He started moving to selling drugs. And guess what? If I would have followed him, I probably wouldn't be on today talking to you because toxic friends will lead you to a end that you don't want to be at. So I'm here to let you know that the second solution to get yourself worth is you got to remove yourself from toxic friends. 
Put friends in your life that supports you, that that values you. Even, and you may say, well, I don't have no friends. Wait, you will meet someone with like mindedness. All you got to do is look for someone else who knows their value, someone else who sincerely know their self-worth. And I promise you, they're not going to be intimidated by you. They're not going to care. They're going to actually celebrate you the same way I was telling you about how the musicians are. They're, you're going to find a bass player and, and, and you're going to be like, wow, I'm a drummer. They're a bass player. We can make good music together. So what you're looking for is somebody else who is enjoying what they are called to do and what their purpose to do. And then you want to find what your purpose to do. And those are the friends that you want to start connecting with and watch how your self-worth changes because now you find your value. So in this particular thing, in this particular class, I want you to understand self-worth. To get the, the second solution to self-worth is you got to remove yourself from toxic friends. Do it today so you can get your self-worth back. <laughs>